Hello friends. So today's video is going to be part two to the books I read because of social media. And if you missed part one, I did clarify that I think there's a big difference between you heard about a book on booktube or Twitter or bookstagram, Instagram, I should actually use their real app names. But anyway, you hear about them online and you think that sounds good and then you check it out. I think that's very different from maybe you're not even really that interested in the book, but everybody keeps talking about it or you keep seeing people post pictures of it. It keeps coming up in conversations that you're like, well, all right, I guess. I'll pick this one up, and that's more so what I'm talking about. Before jumping into it though, a big thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. It's a fast growing book subscription service, so the way it works is every month you have five different books that you can choose from, all of which are a mix of different genres. Sometimes you have debut authors, sometimes you have returning authors, and then sometimes you even get books that are out a little bit early, which is a fun perk. If there's a certain month that doesn't quite have something you're looking for, then you can save that credit for a future month or for an add-on. And what's really cool is currently you can actually pick any of the regular five books as your book of the month pick or you can pick one of their add-ons so i'll go through the five regular book of the month picks as well as the two add-ons for this month the first book for this month is a contemporary fiction called a little hope it's an ode to the beautiful of the everyday it traces the losses loves and dreams of a small connecticut town we also have a young adult debut called the keeper of night which is actually an anticipated release of mine this year and it follows a character named Ren who is on a journey to impress the goddess of death in a riveting story of monsters, magic, and reapers. We also have a thriller called The Collective. It says, Hell hath no fury like a mother scorned in this propulsive story of rage, injustice, and the limits of revenge. If you're looking for historical fiction, we have The Family, another debut set in mid-century Brooklyn. It's a story of decade-long friendship between two women bound by the sins of their fathers. We also have a fun romance called How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days. Two friends take a wild road trip to stop the world's most eligible bachelor from making a big mistake getting married. The add-ons that they have this month, which again, you can pick as one of your regular book of the month books if you're a new member. One of them would be a memoir called Will, which is by Will Smith with Mark Manson. We also have a collection of essays by Emily Rodakowski called My Body. So you can pick either of these two books as well. If you're interested in checking out book of the month, you can get your first month for $9.99 with the code that I will have on the screen and in the description bar down below. Thanks again to book of the month for sponsoring today's video. And now back to the books that I read because of social media. Some of the influences are kind of my friends that also have their own channels. And that's true for the first one, which would be the book of Coley. I really loved the idea of the story. I think this is one of those books where the marketing leads you to believe it's gonna be something that it's not quite. Uh, so the setup, as far as the setting goes and the way it's presented is that it follows this kind of post-apocalyptic world where people are broken up into more like tribes at this point. And there's leftover pieces of technology that they don't really understand. But the people within these societies that are able to make the technology basically just turn on or work are the ones that have more power. They're kind of seen as to be revered. And my friend Jade from the channel Bedtime Bookworm had read this and she thought it was really interesting. And when she was describing it, I thought that reminds me a little of Horizon Zero Dawn. And then she said, it reminded me a little of Horizon Zero Dawn. And I was like, okay, I'm all for it. And I feel I perhaps didn't, I wasn't very clear before. The part of the setup that really I think is not as prevalent as I was hoping was the idea of there being kind of murderous plant life. So within these societies, they sort of have to be contained to being a smaller amount of people and they can't really flourish because you get bits and pieces of the fact that we try to kind of mess with... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say something. Genetic coding of trees, basically, right? I'm sure it's, it is better described in the book than that. But basically we try to mess with the way that trees grow because of kind of, it would, it would seem because of global warming. Because we're with these people who are not as knowledgeable, they don't describe it quite like that. But that's kind of the pieces that you pick up as you're reading. And the problem with us messing with plant life is that it essentially grew to crave flesh. And so the trees can actually move and they can eat you essentially, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so cool. And that wasn't as big of a part of the book as I was hoping. It's still definitely very interesting and a very unique setup. Just think this book, you know, it wasn't really for me. Next up, we have Aeronauts Windless by Jim Butcher. So this is kind of a steampunk setting. And I still feel like we're not seeing as much steampunk as I would like. I would like for there to be 
a true steampunk subgenre. There's just so much to choose from, and I don't feel like there's that much. If you have recommendations, let me know. But anyway, I, um, I don't dislike Jim Butcher's writing. I quite like it. I just found that that book didn't quite work for me, but I really like the airship aspect. It's very, you know, Final Fantasy, and uh, I, I dig it. And there are aspects of it that I really liked. I, I liked a lot of the characters. It's just the pacing was a little off for me. But I picked this one up partly because my friend, Jashana, who has her own channel, she would talk about it quite a bit and really liked it. And I would hear other people, because Jim Butcher is a pretty big name in fantasy. He wrote The Dresden Files and uh, Codex Alera, which I still would like to give a go. I like his style of writing and I think his books feel fun. There's just a, a general like adventurous side to his books that I really like. But I would frequently see people, because he has multiple works out from different series and whatnot, I would so often see people being like, oh, I really want him to write the next book in that series. I want him to write the sequel to Aeronauts Windless. And I'm like, I mean, kind of seems like people think this is his work, right? Like his book, the book that they want to point to and be like, this is actually great. Like Dresden, Dresden's okay. Codex, it's okay. But this this is where it's at. And I think I fell into like the waiting for the sequel hype. It's just, just, you know, didn't quite work for me. But like I said, still would love to read more Jim Butcher. Next up we have Kiss of Deception. So this is a story that follows a girl who basically runs away from her obligations. The classic, there's this princess who's destined to marry this prince but doesn't want to marry him and she wants to live her own life. And so the very beginning of the book, that sort of trope, it's like, you know what? I am just gonna leave. I am gonna abandon all my obligations and I'm just gonna go live like a commoner kind of a vibe. And she does, that's what she does. That's the beginning of the book. But the person that she was supposed to marry, it, they end up searching for her as does an assassin. And the thing that kind of pulls people in and is kind of the, the hook of like, this is what makes this book interesting and different is that the way it's told, you don't know which of the people, because they do find her, you don't know which one's the assassin and which one is the guy she's supposed to marry. And you're like, uh, I don't know uh, if this is a dangerous situation right now. Every time that the girl is with one of them, you're like, are they gonna harm her? I can't tell. And I thought that was a pretty cool approach. So this, I, I actually kind of liked the first one. And then I started the second one and the main character was just, she annoyed me too much for me to keep going. But what's interesting about this series is it's YA fantasy. I read a mix of adult and YA. I love both age ranges. And this one, I see it get talked about as if it's not like other YA books or, you know, people that don't typically read YA, they're like, but I like that series. And I'm like, that series is about as YA tropey as possible. <laughs> I read this book basically because of that hook. I hear people talk about it. I'm like, okay, that sounds... That sounds interesting. I'm always a sucker for the, you know, the classic, I don't want to be a princess uh, plot. It's like that, what's that one thing with Aladdin where uh, Jasmine's like, I don't want to be a princess anymore. She like splashes the fountain or something like that, whatever she says. That's what this makes me think of. But either way, I didn't hate the first book. So I guess social media didn't quite lead me astray with that first one, but it was... Just not a series I'm going to continue with because the main character is frustrating and also I'm surprised it gets talked about as if it's super, super unique because aside from that cool aspect of it, it's not that, you know, it's not changing the landscape of YA fantasy. Next up, we have Assassin's Apprentice. So I'm sure most of you know what Assassin's Apprentice is. It's by Robin Hobb and Robin Hobb has so many books out. And everybody says, well, you, you have to start with her original trilogy, the Farseer trilogy. So that's why I started with that one. I kind of want to read some of her other works, but man, so many people say, but you, you really need to read those first ones if you want to appreciate things later. And I'm sure that's true. I haven't gotten that far in. And I have been saying for so long that I need to pick up the next book in that trilogy and I still have it and I feel pretty bad about it. Last we have the Seven Realms Quartet by Cinda Williams Chima. So I, this, this is a slightly older fantasy series and I every now and then crave something that's not classic fantasy but isn't modern. It's somewhere a little bit in between. So this is not super old by any means. I think it's fair to say that 
any time that something is extremely successful that publishing then wants to try and emulate what they had with that. You see it, you know, with like Twilight, you see it with Hunger Games. In adult fantasy, a lot of people say that everything was trying to be Lord of the Rings. Anyway, so you get the point. There are trends and then there are books that are similar. But then there's like that before the trend. You know, a book that kind of, a series that just sort of sat on its own was its own thing. And every time I would hear people describe this quartet, I always thought, that's what that sounds like. It sounds like it was its own thing, that it was, it's not necessarily to say that there aren't influences, of course, but it doesn't feel exactly like anything else. It doesn't have anything really that I see in, I mean, it's got like the princess and the street urchin type of character, right? And like they end up, their lives are intertwined and, you know, it's got, it's got some classic type of tropes, but the setting itself it just, it stands on its own very well. And I've also just heard so many people talk about this author and seeing her praises. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to give that series a try. And I'm glad I did. Let me know if some books that you were influenced to read because of social media. Let me know if they ended up working for you or not working for you all that much. But anyway, I will have part one linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.